Welcome back, Pokemon trainers. Professor Chaz here, the lab coat's on back order, and it's time for episode number 33. I had to stop and think, what number are we on? I'm losing track. That's when you know we're getting to a long series, when I can't remember what number we're on. But, pretty sure this is episode 33 of our Pokemon Coliseum playthrough. As you just saw, there was a bit of grinding because in the last episode, we lost somebody. Had to add a new Pokemon to the team, and I had to get him trained up and get caught up with the rest of the team. So we did that in Mount Battle for a little bit, because we are here, we've accessed the base ground floor of Real Gam Tower, Team Cypher's, I guess, final hideout, final location, final stronghold. We're taking this place by force. So let's not waste any time. We wasted plenty of time during the grinding. I shouldn't say wasted, we spent plenty of time. It is not wasted, because look how high Pinky got. Starting at level 37 at the last episode, he's up to 46 now. And we're good old Slowbro here is Adamant, not the best nature for a Slowbro, but gonna work with it. Oblivious is the ability, which doesn't prevent taunting in this generation, it's just attraction. I like how they gave it a bit of an update later on, because who uses attract anymore, really? With uh, Shadow Ball, try attack, yawn, and skill swap for the moves. Next is Spangler at level 49, our Misdreavus, a sassy Pokemon. Levitate is the ability, and Spell Tag is the item to power up Shadow Ball. Also has Psybeam, Confuse Ray, and Parish Song. Next is Entei at level 49, a jolly natured Pokemon with the Pressure ability. Fire Blast, Bite, Stomp, and Sunny Day for the moves. Next is Lammy the Gligar, she's at level 48. Quiet Nature, Hyper Cutter ability with, uh, with moves, of course. Slash, Poison, Sting, Faint Attack, and Sand Attack. S uh, Stacy the Ariados, I was going to say Silver Powder the Ariados, no. Stacy the Ariados, holding Silver Powder, is next. Impish Nature with the Insomnia ability. Moves our Sludge Bomb, Leech Life, Scary Face, and Spider Web. And finally, we have Dozer, our level 49 Snorlax. She is naive with the Immunity ability and moves our Body Slam counter, Rest and Metronome. Alright, so, last time, we wasted a bunch of time fighting, I think, one trainer. Was it? I don't know. I think it was the guy that got our hopes up, said we were the thousandth visitor to this real game tower. Turns out, no, he was just messing with us, and he attacked us. What nerve, right? Now, I'm not sure how many more battles there are before we get to the top of the tower. I don't think there's too many. I think there's like a lot of optional battles, but we'll do as much as we can to get experience. Based on the levels that I see the trainers using, I might do some more grinding between this and the next episode, but I'm going to try to record both these episodes, maybe back to back, if I can manage it. I am currently at home, recharging from a Pokemon Going that I was doing later on, or earlier, later on today, earlier on today. I'll tell you more about that after we talk with these folks. Welcome to the just completed Real Gam Tower. Well, how about a battle as an event to commemorate the opening? I didn't say yes. I would have anyway, though. Experience is experience. A lean. A line. The, you just took the words off and line and named a character. Could I call someone Cup Mouse? Looking to stop on my desk here? I don't know. Anyway, Pinky and Spangler taking on a Matang and whatever else that other thing was. I was too busy looking at stuff to name off on my desk here. A uh, Lyron, okay. So Surf is the best move to use here. I ain't got that, so we're gonna go with a neutral Shadow Ball from Matang. And you know what? Forget this. Parasong. Take these two things out. <sighs> so I'm gonna have to switch my Pokemon on the third turn. Make sure that we don't lose anybody. So everyone's been affected by the Parish Song. Of course, they... Wait a minute. She's only got three Pokemon, so one of hers will have to fall. You can't switch both on the same turn if you only have one in reserve. I like how this is playing out. Alright, but if we can take down the Matang first of all, then she'll have no option but to leave the Lyron in and get knocked out. We could double Shadow Ball the Matang, actually. This would be good. Iron Defense... Oh, that's... That's gonna make Shadow Ball less effective. Why would you do that? They're both going for the defenses. Okay, so I guess it's kind of good that we went for the Parish Song. So, I did go out Pokemon going this morning. I had everything charged up. I had, Basically, I had a full plan today to go out and about, seeing what I can do in the world of Pokemon Go. Now, before I talk about my day, I will say, since I haven't done a news update in forever, now I can mention something about Pokemon Go. I think today is the last day for the Legendary Birds, at least for now. They might book back. I'm sure they'll be back sometime later on. But, as things stand, later today, generally what that means is not for me. It's going to be uh, tomorrow for my part of the world, but at some point soon, tonight or tomorrow, the legendary beasts of Johto are set to start appearing in Pokemon Go. And I'm pretty sure it's just like more raid battles. That hurts. Oh, my defense falls. Huh. Pinky, can you finish up this Matang with a Shadow Ball on your own? We're going to switch Spengler out into someone resistant to the, uh, 
what you just used there. Iron Tail, Metal Claw, I believe that was too. Spengler comes back, Fire type Entei comes in. So speaking of Entei, one of the legendary beasts of Johto, uh, what they're gonna do is, I guess maybe to represent the roaming aspect of the legends, not quite a knockout. So which one would they switch out? What they're gonna do is, certain parts of the world, certain regions, will have one of the legendary beasts. For example, they said in the Americas, Raikou is the first uh, set to appear, so that's the first one I'll be looking at as far as doing the Pokemon Go video, trying to hunt one of these down on the channel. So, would you use a rock move against Entei? You might. I gotta switch Pinky out, though. Hmm. Okay, Pinky, we're switching you into a defensive Pokemon. Let's go with Lammy. And Entei. Let's just Fire Blast the Lyra. Let's see if they switch either of those two out, though. But. Uh, yeah, so Raikou is the first set to appear in the Americas, and I believe they said in Asia, Suicune is set to appear, and in Europe, it is Entei. Now, I don't know if, uh, like, I was telling that to my nephew, and he said, what about Australia? And, like, you know, maybe in Africa, like, is there anything in Africa? I don't know if they mentioned that or not. I would check, but my phone is recharging right now, so ignore that for the time being. But maybe what's going to happen if these two regions do not have those Pokemon yet, or any of the legendary beasts, maybe as far as the roaming aspect, they will appear in those regions later. Like, the beasts are supposed to be here until September 30th, they said, so you have a full month to find the legendary beast in your region, your continent, until, you know, they're gone, basically. Oh, uh, we're gonna do a, a sand attack and fire blast. I think fire blast is gonna be enough for the knockout, unless we miss. Rats. But, what was I just saying? Yeah, so you have a month, and Personally, I think a month is kind of long for legendaries to be around like that, but I can see why they, I can probably see why they did it. For example, you have a lot of Pokemon all, or a lot of Pokemon, a lot of Pokemon trainers, a lot of players all over the world giving feedback on what they think of the way the game is, is going, right? I didn't mind when the legendary birds were only available for one week, because not everyone is entitled to a legendary Pokemon. Not everyone's going to get one. I myself, I only got two of the four birds. Two of each. No, two Zapdos, two Articuno, but... Anyway, I didn't get Moltres, I didn't get Lugia. I don't mind that, you know? The people that have it, I'm gonna look to them to say, Good job, congratulations, you know? Do I need that? No. I guess I'm just more selfless that way. You know, a lot of people, they, they want everything that they can get. I've said this before, I am probably the worst kind of mentality to be playing Pokemon, because I don't think gotta catch them all. I think I'll catch whatever I happen to get. Since you bother to come, you may as well enjoy yourselves. Ho, ho, ho! Whoa. They told me this place will be attracting guests from all over the world. I can demonstrate my battling to all sorts of people. I can become famous worldwide. You're lucky. Before anyone, I'll show you how skilled I am at battling. Alright. But, uh, what was I going to follow up that with? Anyway, legendary beasts are coming to Pokemon Go. I'll be doing my best to try to find them. So, that's what I'll lead into what I was doing today. Since I had a lot of time today to get stuff recorded here and just go out and about playing the games, I decided I'm not going to heal Spengler at all. I'm going to focus on just getting some knockouts here. I should probably have healed Spengler in retrospect. So, Pinky, how about this? We're going to have you toss a super potion to your buddy Spengler as our mischievous goes for a side beam onto that poison head. Whoops, almost chose the wrong Pokemon. But, I got an early start to. Oh, okay. I wanted to get an early start today. You ever notice that if you're waking up in the morning, you have your alarm set to wake you up, and uh, the snooze button is right there. Sometimes the snooze button is very inviting. And that being the case, I kind of slept in later than I would have wanted to. But at least I got a nice early-ish start. You know, by early-ish, I mean before noon, because that is early in some respects. Uh, let's try attack the Octillery as we go for like a Shadow Ball the Octo and the Quillfish. Anyway, I got uptown and I was prepared to start doing some gym battles, try to boost up my gym badge levels, get maybe some gold badges, and just go around catching things, reload some items. And for the first 20 minutes to a half hour while I was uptown, the game would not load up properly. It would load on occasion, but then after, like, I would walk maybe a block or two, and the little white Pokeball loading symbol would start spinning and spinning and spinning and spinning and spinning and just would not stop. Can we burn you or paralyze a freeze? Nothing of the sort. Hmm, you're probably gonna dive Spengler. We don't really have anyone that can take that hit. 
what can we do here? Um, well, the artillery is the slowest, so... Spengler is one injury away from getting knocked out completely. I'm going to try attack the Seedra, and let's switch into Dover. Make sure you can handle this the best. But fortunately, after about 20 minutes, 25 minutes or so, the game finally loaded up properly. There must have been something wrong with their servers or something, but it kicked back in just as I was preparing to take on my first gym for the day. Ooh, waterfall. And dive. Two water-type HM attacks. Interesting. So I managed to power up a gym. I took it over. As Team Instinct, it's somewhat rare for us to hold on to gyms for an extended period of time, but by the time I left the uptown area, we had a level 6 Team Instinct gym in that spot that I conquered, so that was pretty cool. Uh, we're going to try attack again. We're going to body slam the Seedra. And not really much else. Well, one thing to mention is since I had yesterday's raid pass and I did not see any legendary raids going on uptown yet today, I thought I want to use today's pass while I'm out and about to make sure I don't basically you know, waste it. I can use yesterday's pass and pick up another one today. We can use it later on today. So I found a leg or not legendary, I found a wheezing raid. Now it's a level two raid. I find some level twos I'm able to take on quite easily. Um Executor is an easy one for me to take on. And was there any others that I find kind of piece of cakery? Can't recall. Oh the burn takes you out underwater. Look at this fainting animation. No even see go back to the Pokeball. It's just non-existent. We're down to for alligator, everybody. Try attack body slamming. Hydro pump, what? Block that. Nothing. Anyways, so I was taking on the Weezing, and I guess if the Pokemon doesn't have a double weakness to something, my guys are low-powered-ish, kind of hard to like take them down, right? So I got the Weezing pretty low, didn't manage to beat it before time was up, unfortunately, but I was prepared to go back in right away, and the second attempt, two Mystics appeared from out of nowhere and helped me out, so that was kind of cool. Managed to get that Weezing, I did capture it, I got some Golden Raspberries, I think three or four of those, and I also got one Rare Candy. I'm saving my rare candies in Pokemon Go for when I'm walking somebody that needs seven col or seven for uh, five kilometers or higher, if you're talking legendary Pokemon, and using the candy on those Pokemon. Oh, you dashed my dream of fame! It's what I do. It's what I'm best at. But yeah, decent outing for Pokemon Go, and as soon as I'm done recording these episodes, I'm heading back out again for a little bit more adventuring. Maybe we'll find one of the legendary beasts. Probably not, though. What I'll do, I'll hone my skills and position myself as a charismatic trainer. Funny how I always mess up words, but I managed to say charismatic pretty much perfectly there. Is there anyone to speak to here? Oh, I think I know what's about to happen. Do we need to heal? No, but we do need to switch. Lammy. Actually, yeah, we kind of need to heal Dozer. We have ourselves Hyper Potions. I think there's a healing spot around here somewhere, though. I'm going to wait on that. I knew it. Big guy comes barging right out. I thought it was maybe an upper door, but... Wah! I give you a good jolt, eh? Wah -ha -ha -ha. I've been waiting behind the door for you to come along. Been a long, been waiting a long time. Next, I'll shock you even more with my Pokemon battle. Bring it on, big guy. Givern. I don't... Givern. I care. Whatever. Wiggly tough. Loud. Normal types. Where's my fighting moves when I need them? Oh, wait. I can't shadow ball these things. I can try attacking, though. Know? I can try that. And slash is just always good, too. I will attempt try attack on the Wigglytuff. So I see that we are kind of over leveled for these lower Pokemon trainers. I guess we might, or might not even do any grinding between now and the next episode. So we'll probably record back to back unless the unthinkable happens and we lose someone. We need to add someone else to the team, but we're not going to think that way. We're going to focus on victory. Yes! That's one way to get victory. Burn things. Burn everything. Alright, Astonish into who? What? Why? Oh yeah, I'm Psychic type. But it did nothing. It's funny how Astonish is like just a scream, right? Like, uh, don't they actually say, I think, isn't it a sound-based move? And uh, things like Soundproof Pokemon with, uh, for example, Mr. Mime, and I believe uh, Voltorb Electro can have it. I think, are they immune to Astonish? I can't even remember. I still think, at some point, sound type could become a thing in Pokemon, because Back when Gen 6 was first coming out, there was some debate and theory over like if there's going to be some new typings added, and based on the look of some of the Pokemon from Gen 6, like Noivern, those speaker-like ears that it has, people thought that could have indicated a sound type in Pokemon. And what else was there? Uh, 
yeah, the, the colorful light of Xerneas. Some people were debating that maybe that would be a light type being added. That would have been interesting. Speaking of light, you guys ever see uh, this anime called Death Note? You guys see the American version of that? I haven't, but I've heard some things about it. Actually, uh, my family was talking about it there just earlier today. I'm not sure if I would be interested in checking it out, but I've heard a lot of people unhappy with it for whatever reason. Oh, okay. Here's where I'm going to go on a rant. Where's my soapbox? I'm going to stand up tall. The thing is, when a new version of something is made, personally, I can't say, you know, I look down on other opinions of this because everyone's got opinions, but personally, that's a shocker. You're like outrageously tough. Thank you. I like when things get a new telling, a new version of it, right? Do you know how hard it is to just wait and wait and wait without moving? Try imagining it. Now think about it, eh? I doubt very much that you can keep at it for long. Well, ha, 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 ha. All right, then. Can we heal? Don't think this is the healing room. I want to sneak past some people. Not see any healing. Uh, let's... Can we press on with who we got with the HP? Ah, Pinky needs to heal up. Let's switch you out for the time being, Pinky. We'll let uh, Stacy and Lammy lead the way. I want to try to get as much battling done. I've got to go at least one more fight for this video. Are you here to dine? Nah, I just ate, actually. Is that so? That's okay, then. But what if I am here to dine? Sorry to disappoint you. We're not ready to serve anyone yet. Let me make up for it. Also, for a little battle. There we go. Can't read, don't care. But, okay. Here's where I'm going to lose about half of my subscribers when I admit this, but I enjoyed the live-action Super Mario Brothers movie back in the 90s. 90... Was it, was it 93? That number comes to mind, but... Way back in the day, there was a live-action Super Mario Brothers movie. I enjoyed it, alright? I know... A lot of people were not fans of it. What is the biggest threat? Chimeco? Cradley has always been a threat, but let's focus on the Chimeco first. Faint attack and slug bomb. Because, so some people... <sighs> the live action Super Mario Bros. movie took a lot of liberties and stuff and made new ideas and stuff, you know? I like when things are different. Because, for example, if people wanted exactly what they saw in the Mario Brothers games retold on the movie theater, on the movie screen, first of all, I wouldn't want to sit there watching a couple guys jumping around on turtles and mushrooms for an hour and a half, you know? That would get boring, and that's basically what Super Mario Brothers is all about. Another thing, though, if I want the original story of something, or I want, I want basically the new version to be just like the original story, I can watch the original story. Don't knock Stacy out. Don't get your staff boost either. Nice. All right. Cradley, you are a problem. Sand attack. So, yeah, that's why I like the Super the Super Mario Brothers live action movie. I also, and again, here's where the other half of my subscribers are going to leave me. I enjoyed Dragon Ball Evolution. Yes. Because it was different enough, yet it still retained some similarities to the original story. Again, it's like, if I didn't want to see this version, this retelling of it, I could just watch Dragon Ball Z and Dragon Ball and the entire series, right? There's nothing preventing me from watching that all over again. Stacy, we're going to switch you out, girl. Let me switch into... Actually, I could sludge bomb and knock out the Cray Dilly, I think. How much did we do to that? I think we can get the knockout. I am going to be safe, though, and go for... Let's go with our last Super Potion. Hope we get the knockout here. Ooh, well this is gonna hurt. I think we could survive a rock or a ancient power if this doesn't knock out the Cradilly. Never mind, down it goes. But yep, yeah, I enjoyed those two live action movies. Feel free to leave me a comment down below. Did you enjoy them as well? If so, why? And if not, I was gonna say leave a comment why you didn't like it. There's so many reasons why people didn't like those movies. I, you don't need to waste your time leaving a comment about that. You know, if you'd like to just go ahead and let me know why. All right, Sludge Bomb, Knock Towel, and I guess Slash Knock Towel, too. We should be able to handle the wing attack. Unless Critical Slash takes you out, we are eight levels above. No, okay. But a Stab Sludge Bomb, if we survive wing attack, should be fine. How many knockouts do you have, Stacy? Only two, I believe. Let me get my little injury sheet here. One! Is that right? 
Man, our Ariados is doing a lot better than I would have expected. When I added her to the team, I simply did it because her level was highest of the other Pokemon. And I just thought, we gotta add somebody. Let's just bring her in. She's actually doing pretty good. Alright, let us... I'm probably gonna switch now, though. Let's go with a resistant type and Spangler. As we go for slash attacks. If we can get those critical hits and ignore... No, wait. I don't think Stockpile boosts your defenses in this generation yet. I think it's just to power up, spit up, and swallow. I want to get some good damage off of this. Can't tell if that was actually defense boosted or not. We got Psybeam, though, on Spangler. We can easily go for some super effective... Uh, I almost said poison. Super effective psychic type hits, especially now that the light screen is down. I forgot that was up. Psybeam, and let's go. Let's just sand attack. I don't think we're going to do too much damage with our Gligar. Yeah, I'm going to say that the stockpile does not boost your defenses in this generation. That was a lot of damage that that Psybeam just did. And with one more Psybeam, we're coming to the end of this battle and the video. But I am going to record another one immediately and have it up in just a couple hours time for you folks to check out. Oh, will this hurt? No, it won't. Sweet. Nice. So, once I'm done with this fight, which is happening in just a moment, off camera I'll go heal up and I'll come right back and pick up where we left off. But I guess as this battle does come to a close, I want to say thanks for watching today's episode, everybody, of Pokemon Coliseum. If you enjoyed it, of course, feel free to leave a like down below. And share this series with a friend that might want to check out some sort of classic retro style, at this point in time, Pokemon games. e -lose. your name Your name has lose in it. Did you think you could have beat me there? Your parents, man, they knew it was coming. That was too heavy for some light exercise before a meal. But again, yes, thanks for watching. If you missed any episodes of Pokemon Coliseum, there's a link in the description to the full playlist. You can go check that out. And of course, during the outro, there's some links to some other videos that I have done. Plus, a link to subscribe to the channel if you want to get your daily Pokemon content from Professor Chaz. But I guess with that, we are now done. I want to say thanks again for watching. Professor Chaz is signing off. Come on back in a couple hours' time for another episode of Coliseum today. And until then, I'll catch you next time.